Good morning, everybody. It is nine o'clock. Lyon County Board of County Commissioners for Thursday, May 16th, 2024. Today's agenda action be taken on all items unless otherwise. Unless otherwise noted, no action will be taken on any item until it is properly agendized. To avoid meeting disruptions, please play cell phones and beepers in the silent mode or turn them off during the meeting. The board reserves the right to take items in a different order to accomplish business in the most efficient manner. Items may be combined for consideration and items may be pulled or removed from the agenda at any time. Restrictions on comments by the general public. Any such restriction must be reasonable and may restrict the time and place manner of the comments, but may not restrict comments based upon viewpoint. Board of County Commissioners convening as other boards. Members of the Board of County Commissioners also serve as the Liquor Board, Central Line Vector Control District Board, Mason Valley Mosquito Abatement District Board, Walker River Weed Control District Board, Willow Creek General Improvement District Board, the Silver Springs General Improvement District Board, and during this meeting may convene as any of those boards as indicated on this or a separately posted agenda. This meeting may break between 11.30 and 1.30 for lunch. Roll call. All commissioners are in chambers. Today's invocation will be given by Gary Least of Calvary Chapel, Dayton Valley. Sir, please rise. Good morning. Before I pray, I want to just share a few words with you from the sixth president of the United States, Quincy Adams, John Quincy Adams. He was writing to his son on the Bible and its teachings, and he said these things. He said, there's three points of doctrine, the belief of which forms the foundation of morality. The first is the existence of God. The second is the immortality of the human soul. And the third is the future state of rewards and punishments. Suppose it possible, he said, for a man to disbelieve either of these three articles of faith, and that man will have no conscience. He will have no other law than that of a tiger or a shark. The laws of man may bind him in chains, they may put him to death, but they will never make him wise, virtuous, or happy. Our founding fathers knew that morality and virtue are found only in the knowledge of God and in his holy word. So let's pray. Lord, today we acknowledge you and your divine word. God, you are the sovereign ruler and the one true almighty God. We acknowledge you and, our, and your righteousness and that you will judge and reward those that are righteous and punish the wicked. Lord, we also acknowledge that our actions have eternal significance and that we will either gain favor in your presence or be separated for all eternity. And thus, we look to you for wisdom, the wisdom we need to govern and direct our personal affairs as well as the affairs of this county. We pray that you would provide these servants called to represent the citizens your mercy, your grace, your wisdom, and the blessings needed to exercise their office and duties wisely with virtue and morality. We pray for their health, for their protection, for them and their families, and that they would prosper as they continue to acknowledge you and serve those in whom they are called to represent. May they govern with wisdom, with morality, with virtue, always acknowledging the hand that guides them and the blessings from heaven. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Mr. Jacobson, will you lead us in the pledge plate? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Item four, public participation. No action will be taken on any item until it is properly agendized. It's anticipated that public participation will be held at this time, though it may be returned to at any time during the agenda. Citizens wishing to speak during public participation are asked to state their name for the record and will be limited to three minutes. The board will conduct public comment after discussion of each agenda action item, but before the board takes any action. So we will have public comment. Um, 
Yes, Mr. Hunter, please come forward and state your name for the record and sign in. My name is Don Hunter and I live at 137 U.S. Highway 95A North, approximately seven miles from the jail. I'm here to make a verbal complaint about releasees. Over the past several years, I have them knock on my door. I have them approach and walk on my property and ask for water or even ask for a ride. Two weeks ago, I found one sleeping in one of my vehicles. Now, I was told that they will not take them out of town, but they will pick them up and bring them to town. I'm asking the commissioners to take under consideration to make sure that they are released and removed from the county or brought back to where they were picked up, or at least be made to have a ride when they are released from the jail. I'm concerned about every neighbor on the highways where they're going to, one day something bad's gonna happen. And the other day when I found him in my vehicle, he's lucky that I wasn't packing a firearm because he would have been laying on the ground, not dead, but at gunpoint until the sheriff showed up. So I just want you all to consider bringing this to the agenda and doing it, having them change your policy of just let them go. That's that's my complaint. Thank you, sir. I'm done. My three minutes is up. <laughs> Any other public comment? Seeing none, we will move on to item five for possible action review and adoption of agenda. <clears throat> Do I have uh, any input from the commissioners or from the public? Seeing none, I will take a motion to re to adopt the agenda. He's jumping in this morning. We must all be doing good. Bye, Mike. <laughs> Make a motion to approve the agenda. Okay. I'll, I'll second it. All right. Motion by Commissioner Keller, second by Commissioner oh. Henderson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So the agenda is adopted, classified zero. Um, I do not see Shayla yeah, here. Yeah. Is she? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just see the back of her head then. Presentation of awards and a recognition of accomplishments, item six. For presentation only, recognize the Lyon County Human Services Director, Shayla Holmes, for her efforts and service to the citizens of Lyon County in receiving the National Alliance on Mental Illness Western Nevada Chapter's 2024 Leadership of the Year Award and her education achievement of completing her dissertation, earning her doctoral degree. So please come forward. Dr. Holmes. Holmes. Dr. Holmes, please come forward. All right. And you passed in Lyon County Manager. So, yeah, I wanted to recognize um, Lyon County Human Services Director Shayla Holmes. She's been busy lately. So, <laughs> recently she was honored with the um, NAMI, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness um, Leadership Award of the Year. And uh, I think in the same week, her dissertation was approved. And uh, Officially became a doctor. Well, um, and I apologize. Which uh, a doctor of uh, public administration. Perfect. So, um, with that, we have uh, to appreciate. It. Great work. Okay. We need to move it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you. I know. Huh? 
Just uh, don't need any medical advice. <laughs> don't believe in us. Yeah, no, no, I am uh, 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 well, it's sort of a CCA. Well, can I think my CCA? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing from us with anyone. <laughs> What was your dissertation on, Dr. Holmes? Come on. I'm not sure I should share this in this uh, forum, but my um, dissertation was the official title was Land Use Policy Impact on Health Equity in Rural America. Right on. Yeah, a little bit of a good cross sector, locally applicable. Although I did not use Lyon County as one of my research subjects, we went way far up. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, and tremendous two accomplishments there. Yeah. I mean, your doctorate and the fact that your your leadership award. So very, very proud of you. Uh, you do a great job every day, and this is just extra. So appreciate it. Thank you very much. Any Bye. other commissioners? I don't know how um, she had well, time to do it with everything else she does, but <laughs> congratulations. That's a huge accomplishment. I know your number one job is probably being a mom, but uh, truthfully, uh, you you should be up for an award for all the money you bring into our county. So uh, you're truly an amazing leader. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there was many nights at soccer fields and football fields with a laptop in front of me. So <laughs> there was definitely a, a little bit of a mis mixed match going on there. A lot of work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. And we're going to move on to number seven, commissioners and county manager reports. We'll start with Commissioner Hendricks. Um, yesterday, I attended a tour of the solar panel recycling facility in Silver Springs. They have one area that's just a demo area that shows how it's all going to work. And that was very interesting. Commissioner Henderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't have much to report. This month's Campo meeting was canceled, so obviously I didn't go to that, and I was um, unable to attend the Mound House or the Silver City advisory boards due to a conflict. So that's it. Commissioner Keller. Thank you, Chairman Hockaday. Uh, I attended uh, several meetings over the last two weeks, and it was kind of a taxing experience, uh, a lot of driving, covered a lot of ground, and... Uh, not all of it was good news. I attended a lot of uh, breakout sessions and stuff at the at the NACA Weir. Uh, I also attended. Uh, let's see, the De Northern Nevada Development Authority, and also the Comstock Metals plant, and I think that's it. But what I did want to talk about is on those breakout sessions, the, a lot of uh, different things that we talked about was one of them was building a sustainable and viable outdoor recreation economy in your county. There's some opportunities coming up with that National Center's Knowledge Hub that we supported. Uh, they did a, a report on that and more to come at our, our uh, national meeting. But the biggest one that I got was about how the county works to bring in businesses, industrial, commercial businesses. One thing the county does is they don't, we're not here for a profit, we're not a business, but we do build through the, build the environment so people can come in, so we can get some stuff done. Uh, one of the things in Lyon County that we have, we have highways, we have uh, a short rail, but the number one thing that, uh, site locators look for to bring businesses in as they look for freeways they look for waterways they look for airports they look for rail and Lyon county has none of those and another uh thing that they do is the first thing they do is they don't say what's good about your county what they do is they look at your county and go okay we've got these different sites how can we eliminate them off the list that's what they're doing they're trying to shorten everything down so every county around us, Washoe, uh, Carson, Douglas, Story, have all those things. 
So right away we get knocked off the list. And so we have an imbalance of residential. Every time we build something residential, it, it makes it so that uh, it kind of screws up our quality of life because now we have more roads to take care of everything else. And we have no, no uh, businesses coming in. So I think we're kind of getting up against the gun on that. We at the NN NNDA meeting come to find out that we had a data center that was scheduled for uh, Silver Springs. And they went to uh, Las Vegas because we can't provide power. to. Them. So that eliminates us. That would have been, uh, it would have corrected the balance of over a million dollars a year for us. And we're not getting those things. So I don't know what we're going to do as a board as far as bringing stuff forward as putting pressure on the PUC, the governor's office of economic development. How do we get everything to move forward? And I'm at this point, me personally, I'm not taking a moratorium off, off the board for residential housing because every residential house that comes in here is taken away from the citizens that are already live here. We're becoming the community, the bedroom community for other areas. Uh, Story County just did a, a few months ago, did a, uh, they rezoned a section of land right on the border of Lyon County and Story County. And when they did that, they're already moving dirt, everything else for a data center, and they've got power. And it's right on the border. So how come Lyon County didn't get it? So to me, there we've got to do something. So that's my uh, little soapbox there. But I I noticed that the other areas, when I was at Weir, that's the problems they're having in other areas. And it was kind of enlightening to know that when we keep talking good about our county and look at what we have to offer, that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for ways to eliminate us. So we have to do all those boxes. And another thing is when you get down to like three locations, they, they've got the best location, but all the, the other two locations, so they already know which one's the best location. But then what they do is they pin it against us so that we'll, we're just used as a pawn, which is a lot of staff time, everything else when they know they're not even coming to our area because they might have rail in the other area or an airport. And a lot of these inland ports are going in. And so we're up against the gun. So I just want to bring that to everybody's attention. And that's all I got. Commissioner Jacobson. Thank you. I, I guess I need a little clarification, Commissioner Keller. So did you say we don't have rail in Lyon County? We have to put rail. Yeah. In uh, Fernley, we have. In the city of Fernley, we have rail. Well, that's, but, Lyon, that's part of Lyon County. We, yeah. Okay, well, the city of Fernley does have rail and freeway. It's the rest of the developed area of Lyon County. Oh, okay. So, okay, I just want to make sure that we're recognizing the Fernley no, they, still part of Fern the county. Yeah, Fernley's got two, but I was counting them as the city, so I'm, I excuse the misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Chairman Hockaday. Um, I, I took a uh, – been a while, um, so I, I went and took a Tesla tour. Um see what was going on out there. I know that I uh, um, wanted to find out a little bit more about their um, electric semi-trucks is getting some email uh, regarding the weight of those vehicles and the pounding that it would put on our interstates uh, and uh, other roads. Um, and I found that interesting. Um, they are going full gangbusters ahead with those for sure. Um Want to relate some sad news, especially in the Fernley area. Uh, passing of a, of a longtime Fernley resident, Dan McCassie, his service is actually here in about 40 minutes. Um, great guy. Um, did a lot of for the community and, and community service. He will be missed. Um, uh, and then on a uh, just a better note, um, just want to wish all the sports teams good luck in the spring sports. Um, I'm a competitive guy, and uh, so I love to see these kids competing. I want to do a shout-out to the Fernley High School golf team, first-ever state championship. Uh, Jacob Holmes, uh, state champion. Noah Davis took third. Um, and I believe a uh, young man from Dayton was runner-up. I want to say Troy Kepler, but I'm not sure on that. But uh, hopefully I didn't screw that up. But, again, uh, just wishing all of the Lyon County schools good luck um, as uh, hope we beat the other counties in everything we do. Thank you.
Did you have something else, Commission? Okay. Um, had a, uh, a meeting with Yarrington Group. Uh, we'll be discussing that later in the agenda today. Uh, the issues that were uh, concerned to Yarrington. Uh, went to the Smith Valley Park Board and discussed several issues, including finishing the court uh, for basketball, tennis, and pickleball. Uh, hopefully in the very near future, we'll get that contract going. Had the bids come in finally at the Walker River Irrigation District meeting and, of course, discuss the issues with water. Um, we're all happy about the snowpack. And uh, if you've seen the Walker, the water's really coming down pretty good there, letting out a lot more out of uh, Topaz and Bridgeport. I uh, also had the agenda review meeting so that we could have an agenda today. So that was great. And I will go ahead and turn it over to the county manager. Andrew Haskin, line county manager. I don't have a whole lot for you this morning. Um, I've been spending quite a bit of time working with um, our emergency manager and our utility director and the city of Yarrington on uh, their uh, well issue. And Taylor, uh, our emergency manager, will be giving us a presentation here in a bit. So I don't want to steal the thunder there. Did want to give the board an update that we do officially own the property um, for the Dayton government complex. So that uh, traditions there so uh, that's really good news and a long time coming so I'm really excited about that and to, to get rolling happy to answer any questions that the board has oh uh also wanted to wish everyone uh any sportsman uh, uh luck on the nevada tag draw yeah. so the results come out tomorrow <laughs> Yes, Mr. Anderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just just a comment, really. I actually drove out to Traditions yesterday, and they are stockpiling a lot of dirt for us. So they are, but, and, and that, but that gives you more of a visual of where the building is actually going to be. So it, it, it was. I, I'm I'm excited about getting that ground broken on that thing. Yeah, pretty cool. There is one thing um, I did want to let the board know is that uh, so right after we closed on the property, there was a big windstorm that came up. And of course, since they've been moving dirt out there, there was quite a bit of dust. I contacted the developer and so we're gonna work out an agreement with them so that we can keep the dust um, down. They're doing it in the meantime. So I did wanna I did want to let the board know that that is being taken care of. So uh, if you get any complaints, we're working on it, so. Any other commissioner comments? Okay, Commissioner Anderson, you and I thank you for all your work with uh, Earrington and uh, you and, uh, and Ms. Taylor. Definitely a lot of things going on there, and we'll hear about it shortly. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Number eight, elected official reports. Commander Powell. Good morning, Commissioners. Commander Ryan Powell. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and present. Unfortunately, the sheriff couldn't make it. He's at uh, Mr. McCassie's funeral today mm -hmm. and uh, along with some other members of the command staff in the sheriff's office. So um, as you said, that's going to be happening here shortly. And so he asked me to come and present for him. So here I am. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to remind the board that uh, Memorial Day weekend is the Life Fest giveaway. So uh, Lyon County Search and Rescue has raised money throughout the year, uh, which culminated in a bingo night fundraiser um, and purchased... Um, hundreds of life vests that they'll be able to give away uh, to children at uh, Lake Lahont. So that'll be a good event that's taking place over the weekend. And uh, thank you. And they will be out there um, the whole weekend. So they'll have a command post set up. I believe it's in the day use area. And uh, just spread the word if anybody asks that, uh, you know, uh, parents want to go out there. Um, they'll have them. They'll fit the life vest to the children and uh, get them get them ready to go. So that's a great thing uh, to do. And, you know, everybody grows um, next year, go and get another vest. So um, I've taken advantage of that with my kids and uh, it's been a, it's been a good program. So that'll be Memorial Day weekend. And then uh, the next thing I have is I wanted to uh, let you guys know that this is police week. And so I briefly mentioned it at our last meeting, but we do have some members of the sheriff's office in Washington, D.C. as we speak that are participating in the festivities for police week. And so um, I wanted to show you guys some pictures. Um, as we go through, um, when you go to Washington, D.C., there's a memorial there for uh, law enforcement officers that are fallen. It's quite the quite the memorial. And during this week, what happens is families will go and put signs up and pictures of their loved ones. And so this is um, 
a recent officer in our neighboring agency, Pyramid Lake uh, Tribal Police Department, uh, Anthony Franconi, who passed away last year after being hit by a vehicle in August. Um, so that's a, um, a picture there that our deputies took and sent back to us. Um, this is a sign here. Uh, they try to group the fallen um, in, in uh, by state. And so these are several of the names that um, that are on that list. And um, I just wanted to mention to you, let me bring this up quickly. Apologize here. Um, the uh, the Lyon County Sheriff's Office has unfortunately had three deputies die in, in the line of duty. And um, we uh, we we typically go uh, when we go back to Washington, D.C., we'll take a sketch like on the Vietnam Wall. You know, you can put a piece of paper and take a sketch. And we have some of those sketches in our office at the sheriff's office. But um, George Rice uh, from Smith Valley, uh, Mick Sorenko and John King were all deputies that died in the line of duty uh, serving the citizens here in Lyon County. And so they've been recognized as well um, by our honor guard members back there. Um, uh, this is just a picture they took of the Capitol getting ready for um, one of the services. And then these are our two deputies here. This is that wall that uh, we showed you a picture of. It's Deputy Taffelmeyer and Deputy Norman. They're uh, all dressed up in their honor guard gear. And uh, quite a quite a very uh, honor, really, I mean, to be able to go back and represent the agency. Uh, this is a picture of the candlelight vigil. And so uh, what happens here is all the families are bussed in. And there's a big presentation that happens and all the honor guard members from all over the nation come together. There's a ceremony there. It's typically attended by uh, federal officials uh, like the attorney general, things like that. And then it culminates in uh, one candle being lit at the beginning. I'm sorry, at the front of the um, memorial. And then it just is shared all the way. So everyone there, hundreds and thousands of people are holding um, these candles. And it's quite moving it really is something to see so um our, our deputies were able to participate in that event and so those are the pictures i had for you i just wanted to um to let you guys know that uh, we're very appreciative for the opportunity to be able to go back there and look forward to being able to do this uh, hopefully we don't put any more names on this wall and um you know we can just go back there and honor those who have paid that sacrifice and no new names so but thank you for your time i'll, I'll entertain any questions that you guys have for me commissioners um, yeah, I'll go. go ahead. Uh, ran into officer deputy Lee over in Dayton, uh, yesterday, yesterday, super upbeat, great attitude. Love that kid. <laughs> He's awesome. So for what it's worth. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll let him know. <laughs> Commissioner. Uh, th th thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Just, just two comments, really one. You know, police week is, is important for you to remind us of that because you guys go out there every day and, and you risk your lives and, and we get to take you for granted sometimes. And so it, it's good to be reminded of that. And then secondly, the life jackets for the kids. Again, another positive interaction with young people, which is going to pay dividends down the road. So thank you guys for taking the time and effort to do that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anything, Fred? Thank you, Commander. Appreciate the. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Okay. I don't see any other elected officials, so we will move on to appointed official reports. Mm -hmm. huh. Better be good news. <laughs> <laughs> I had, to search, oh, I had to search hard to find this up, but I found it. <laughs> Josh Foley, Lane County Council. I wanted to let the board know that our HR director, Amy Hagan, is moving to uh, back to Missouri. And so she is, has given her uh, notice that her last day will be June 3rd. So we are advertising for that position and uh, wish her the best and appreciate what she's done for us. And, We'll uh, hopefully get another good HR director in as we go forward. I was going to give you some good news, but we'll we'll just leave it. Yeah, save it for another day. Thank you very little. <laughs> okay. Uh, do we have any comments here? And thank her for her service to Lyon County, and sorry that she has to leave. Uh, family, I understand. Family and the uh, rental home she had was in in Burnley, they decided to sell. So mm -hmm. she had no rental home left. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
Advisory board reports. I don't see anybody jumping up on that one and I don't see anything on the screen. So we're gonna to go to the consent agenda. Action will be taken on all items. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and may be acted upon by the board of county commissioners with one action and without an extensive hearing. Any member of the board or any citizen may request that an item be taken from the consent agenda discussed and acted upon separately during the meeting. Do I have any commissioners that want to pull anything other than me? I'd like to pull 11E. Okay. I just have a quick question on that. Did you say 11E? Yeah. No, I would like that pulled as well. Okay. And I need to pull 11C. Minutes. Anything further on that? So we're looking at items 11A through 11F, pulling 11C and 11E. Okay. Chairman Hockley, I'll make a motion that we approve the consent agenda. Um, I believe it's a, 11A through F, pulling 11C and 11E for further discussion. Okay. We have any uh, public input? I forgot to ask about that. Didn't see anybody, but okay. I'll second that motion since it, nobody did. All right. So I have a motion by Commissioner Jacobson and a second by Commissioner Henderson to approve items 11A through 11F, pulling 11C and 11E. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That motion passes 5 0. So let's go back to uh, for possible action approved May 2nd, 2024 minutes. And the reason I'm pulling that was because we did make a correction on um, Commissioner Keller. We've got to find the actual spot here. I had it marked on my other paperwork. Um, it's about the um, fuel being taken from the, um, yeah, I was going to bring that up. Yep. Um, page three of the minutes, Commissioner Keller commented that there is an increase in gas being in stolen out of, and uh, we're removing the word in. So it says gas being stolen out of Silver Springs. So that's the correction that was made. The IN was removed. And that was the only correction that I had on 11C. Commissioner Keller. I And I do believe my comment was that we see any increase. It, I didn't say there was an increase. So we see an increase as the weather gets warmer. In other words, I was saying we got to watch out for that. And it okay. states that there is an increase in gas being installed. And then there isn't at this moment. All right. So that whole statement is kind of... So you want to put in that you see an increase in stolen fuel. We see it when the as the weather gets warmer. Okay. Was there a I was just removing the word in and you wanted to put something a little different there? It says Commissioner Keller commented there is an increase in gas stolen out of Silver Springs. I guess if you take out that in, it makes sense. Never mind. Okay. Sorry. Just, just working through it. Yeah, I, I had a hard time reading it yeah. the way it was. So, yeah. All you. right. So that's the correction on that. And uh, it's already been corrected on, on the actual minutes. So do I have a motion for 11C? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the May, 20, May 2nd, 2024 minutes as corrected. Right. Second. Okay. That was Commissioner Jacobson. Yes, sir. So we have a motion by Commissioner Henderson, a second by Commissioner Jacobson. All those in favor on 11C say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. And we had a question on 11E. So my for question. Possible, I'll just a second here. For possible action, approve cemetery rules and regulations that apply to all Lyon County cemeteries. So we'll get to 11E. Go ahead. So I just on uh, number 10 on that 
thing. It says in the event that the adornments have deteriorated and or became unsightly, the cemetery representative has the authority to remove said items. And I just was wondering about the uh, the interpretation that you could take. Is there a different way we could word that? Uh, because somebody says something's unsightly, it's in the eye of the beholder. So whether or not it's a patina something or, you know, is there another way we could word that where it takes that discretion out of that interpretation part out of there to where he just mm -hmm. has the right to remove stuff after a period of time or. Andrew Haskin, my county manager. Yeah, I mean, we can certainly take a look at that if um, the board chooses. I know Doug Homestead is online. Um, I don't know if, if Doug might have a comment. Yeah. On. Doug Homestead, facility director. We could look at some other wording for you and bring it back. I'm just trying to get satisfy the uh, county clerk. She would like just one set of rules for all the cemeteries so her girls aren't confused up there. And uh, yeah, I can definitely look at some different wording and bring it back before you. It's not a hurry item anyway to get done. I just wanted to get it done sometime this year. Thank you. So basically, you want to reword it, bring it back? I just, I would like him to reword it. So just take out the interpretation part of it so that we don't have to, uh, it can't be interpreted wrong. It's yeah. either he has the authority just outright or I just don't want it written down to where somebody can say it was, in their opinion, un, it was sightly, not unsightly. So I I want more power with with our so, so we don't get in trouble. Uh, uh, Chairman Hawk, I guess, I guess this is going to always be an interpretation until you put some criteria to it. So you're looking for criteria. I'm just trying to it could be a time limit or whatever the parks wants to do. I'm just saying that it, if it was me and I had something like say made a something that I wanted the patina to, to look like old and the parks department comes out there and removes it because they said, Hey, it got, became old and unsightly right. in their opinion. Then they have a, a reason to argue back and forth. I didn't want to take the reason to argue out of there. However, they can do that. Even if it was just right. that statement was just out of there. That they have the authority to remove items. Commissioner Jacobson, you wanted to pull out also. Oh, I think it did. You wanted. Do you have a question on this? Or? Well, I just, yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Just, just another option might be to put a definition in the in the ordinance for what unsightly is. Okay. And you have. All right. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, and uh, I would agree with you, Commissioner Keller. That when I read that, that was I, I I thought there was some ambiguity ambiguity there. But at the same time, I I, I get where uh, Mr. Homestead is coming from. Um, I I only had a I only had a question, and it's not. I'm thankful we 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 do this, but plot fees are waived for infants and children under three years of age. Um, I, I would be fine with even up to 16 years of age, but I, I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm not asking for a change. I just wanted, um, I can't imagine as a parent, um, every, every parent's worst nightmare is burying their kid. Um, and, uh, um, it, it's crushing anytime you hear that. Um, so if, if there was to be a change on this, I, I would be absolutely fine with increasing um, plot fees waived for infants and children, uh, even older than age of three. Um, but other than that, I do appreciate the time that went into this. Thank you, Chair. And I know on item 10, since Smith Valley has our own cemetery board for Hillcrest, um, being out there quite a bit, I can tell you that the deteriorated, it's kind of a good description because many of the things are just, you know, they've been there for years and they're basically, you don't even know what they are anymore. But uh, I certainly can agree with coming up with a little bit more uh, descriptive language. So I appreciate those. So um, motion basically to uh, table this and uh, come back later. What would you like to do on that, Commissioner Keller? I just want to I, I second uh, what uh, 
Commissioner Jacobson said about raising the age limit. So okay. if he brings it back, I would like to have that option on there. All right. So we want to bring this back at another time. Have them redo that. So do you have any motion on that or are we just going to? Um, actually, can we approve this with um, and then bring those two items back to add it? Or and that way we can have the rest of these guidelines in place, or is that not doable? Is that not how it's agendized? Um, Andrew Haskin, Long County Manager. So I, I think I mean if you wanted you could remove that, but I I, I would recommend just bringing it back as a package. And okay. Doing it all at once. I agree. Like Mr. Homestead said, there's not a a rush on it. So I do see he has his hand yeah, up. So okay. I think he has something more to say. Yeah, Mr. Homestead. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of get from you guys what age you would like on there because it's these are your rules um, that we that we follow. So you kind of set the rules. I'm just trying to get a consensus, and um, we only have one cemetery board at the time. It's Smith Valley, and otherwise, it's pretty up up to facilities how it's ran. So um, I, your guidance would be greatly appreciated on what age you're looking at. Okay. Um, well, I don't know if I, I'm not speaking uh, for. Sorry. Okay. We, we may need to agendize this a, a little bit differently and bring it back for okay. a broader yeah. discussion. Yeah. I'm Let's, sorry. Okay. I don't, I don't mean to cut off the discussion, but no, nope. we're getting no. a little bit away from what the right. agenda was. Well, and that's, that's why I'm saying we can basically put it off to yeah. discuss it as an agenda item and then maybe next meeting has some better ideas, some better guidance for Mr. Homestead um, and talk about it and get it done. We'll get okay. it back on for a broader discussion. Thanks. Okay. So we're just going to pull 11E. We don't think we need to vote on that. Bring it back at a later date. All right. All right, let's move on then. Moving to the regular agenda, item number 12, Clerk Treasurer for possible action, review and approve the updated investment policy resolution. Ms. Lindbergh, okay. good morning. Stacey Lindbergh, Clerk Treasurer for the record. Um, our uh, Josh and I have been working with Greg, which is our investment advisor, and he came to us with some opportunities to get some higher interest if we did loosen up some of our policy because our policy was very conservative. It's still within the range of the NRS, um, but there was some short-term investments with some higher interest rates that um, in discussing with Josh and, and, and him, we, we became more comfortable with. So we've added some, some different language, which you can see in the marked up policy. Um, so I, I think it'd be advantageous and I, I talked in length with Josh about the risk and, and how it is and, and he better explains that. And I asked him to be here in case you guys had questions in regards to the risk, but, um, he, he was comfortable with it and our advisor, um, thought he could make us some more, um, money, um, with making these few little changes. So that's what we've done and we're proposing it to you and I'm open for questions. Question, Commissioner Jacobson. So our investment person recommended these changes, yes. and Scrooge approved these. Okay. Yeah, I, I said no at first, and then he explained it. I'm like, all right, and I'm like, you better come with me because you got to convince these guys. Uh, <laughs> people probably a lot smarter than me, so I'm going to go with it. And thank you for doing this. Uh -huh. Well, and I also know that um, with the uncertainty of interest rates, that uh, like six month CDs are five percent, and others are. 2% and 3%, anything year, two years. So I'm not sure exactly what we're looking at for investments, yeah. but the short term right now is definitely where there's a lot more money coming in. Some cases double the interest rates. So um, I can I can agree with some of the short term changes. Yeah, and we've done really well staying within the short term uh, with Josh and Greg's guidance. In the short term, we've done really well. So we started at between two and three and um, I just brought the interest rates in case you guys were curious. We're at 
um, between five and, and five and a half now with all of our investments. So they're going really well. I'm not sure when that's going to end, but let's I keep know. keep up the short but term at least. Let's not think about that right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's enjoy it while it's here. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from commissioners? Then any questions from the public? No input. Then we will look for a motion on 12A, review and approve an updated investment policy resolution. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the updated investment policy resolution as presented. Second. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Jacobson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Thank you. 13 Human Resources for possible action review and approve the employer partner agreement and the employer partner agreement addendum with the Comstock Youth Program for the Library grant authority for the human resources director to sign and execute the agreement and the addendum. Yes, sir. Josh Foley, Lyon County Comptroller for the record. This is a program that we have done successfully in the past. Uh, the library <clears throat> and Comstock Youth have brought it back and allowed the, the student age um, people to come work in the library and assist us and it costs us nothing. So I'm open for any questions. Commissioners. Commissioner Keller. So have you watched that membership video that they put out? Because I have a question about that. I just, there's so much woke stuff out there nowadays. I just would like to know what's on that video <laughs> that we're agreeing to. Uh, I mean, I could definitely go ahead and pass this, but I'd like to maybe uh, get that video sent to the commission so that we can all take a look at it, see if we're totally behind it. Okay. Anything further? Any public input? I'm all for getting them some work experience. And uh, since it doesn't cost the county anything other than supervising them while they're working, that's a great idea. Definitely appreciate that. Okay. So do I have a motion on 13A? Nobody's jumping in. Okay. Uh, Chairman Huckabee, I'll make a motion uh, that we approve the employer partner agreement and the employer partner agreement amendum with the Comstock Youth Program for the library. Grant authority for the human resources director to sign and execute the agreement and the addendum. Okay. I will second that. So motion by Commissioner Jacobson and second by Commissioner Hockaday. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Better get some coffee up here. Thank you. Utilities for possible action to approve a contract with Atkins Realist for an amount not to exceed $58,200 for engineering services related to the Aspen Creek Rapid Infiltration Basin and sewer ordinance review. Chairman Hoffman, today, commissioners, David Riquetta for the record. So um, we we would like some engineering support from Atkins. Um, our effluent disposal site for treated sewage goes out to the Aspen Creek ribs. That project was completed in 2000, uh, just completed last year at the end of last year. We're seeing a couple issues with what we call the percolation and how fast it's percolating through the ground and then some buildup of water underneath. So we're looking for some engineering support to help us take a look at this and uh, help us both you know, with what could be causing the problem and then looking for how do we solve this solution or how do we find a solution? Um, and then secondly, uh, we need some review of one section of our ordinance specific to gravity sewer flow. And so they're gonna help us determine you know, how we can improve um, some of our ordinance that we have uh, in the gravity system. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Commissioner's questions. Just any public input? Just one. Oh, yes, Commissioner Henderson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is to address the problem with the ribs that you brought us to us last time. Yes, sir. That's okay. correct. So I thought I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Nothing further. I'll look for a motion. Make a motion to approve a contract with Atkins. Realists for the amount not to exceed 58200 for engineering services related to the Aspen Creek Rapid Infiltration Basin and Sewer Ordinance Review. 
A second? Second. All right. Motion by Commissioner Keller and a second by Commissioner Henderson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. Comptroller back up for possible action. Approve a contract with Paul Cabin, Architect LLC, for professional design services for the Dayton Government Center for a total fee of $2,123,800. Josh Fuller, Lyon County Comptroller, for the record. So now that we own the, the parcel, it's time to move forward with architectural work on it. This is the firm that did the conceptual design for us previously. They helped us out a bit with some of the purchase information on the parcel and evaluation as well. And their fee is um, approximately 8.6% of what the building costs would be. In all likelihood, the building costs may come in a little bit higher than that because we're still not 100% done with we have some modifications to conceptual design that we that we want to make a little bit uh, a few minor changes to. So yeah, I'm here for any questions you may have. Any questions? Commissioner Jacobson. Thank you, Chairman Hockaday. Um uh thank you, sir. Um so Mr. Foley, uh number nine, and I'm referring to I guess on page 18. I don't know if we can. Pull that up. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, Eighteen. Just slap his hand, Aaron. Well, that's like <laughs> there you are. Thank you. Okay, under 9.6, right at the very bottom. When I was reading through this, um, I don't know why this stuck out with me. Maybe, maybe it was because the agenda item that we just previously passed, but if the owner terminates the this agreement for its convenience pursuant to section 9.5 or the architect terminates this agreement pursuant the owner shall compensate the architect for services performed determination reimbursable expenses incurred and costs attributable to termination including cost attributable to the architect's termination of consultant agreements oh all right i think i understand that my question, um, and is there a safeguard for us? I know in the previous, we just passed um, allocating some money for what seems to me maybe a design flaw. Do we have something in these that protect us from design flaws so we don't get hit with these overage or these redos or the mistakes that so i'm I'm just curious is was I, I i don't know that i read it in there that we actually we actually are protected a little bit over i mean if this if we're, we're not happy with what's going on we still pay them if what they do for us doesn't quite make it do we have some recourse so Josh Foley, Lane County Comptroller, for the record, in answer to that, there's an errors and omissions piece of their insurance that that would fall under. Um, and if they come back with substantial change orders because of their errors and omissions, then we have the ability to trigger that uh, portion of their coverage and get reimbursed for it. There are times in any project, any large project, where the, I don't care, when you get a larger or a project this large, there are times there's going to be some things that are just missed and it's the nature of any construction project you come with Fair enough. Technology. And so what we do when we work with architects is we weigh that and we say, okay, so they missed a handful of things. It's going to cost us money. If they would have put it in originally, we would have paid for it. It's when we have to pay extra for the work that it causes a problem. But there are also times 
when we go back to them and say, you know what? We, after further discussion, now that we see it built, we want a change here and a change here and a change here. A change and, order. Mm -hmm. A change order. But the architect, this architect at least, traditionally has not charged us any additional over and above what our contract is, although they have that ability to do. So there's a give and a take on that. But in a, a scenario where we have a, a challenge with the architect, we have that errors and emissions policy to go back to them and say, hey, you screwed up on this. It's going to cost a lot of money. And yes, we're going to pay for the cost of what it would have been if it would have been designed properly and how much it would have cost. But the difference in price between that and what we're having to pay, we want from the errors and emissions. So when you when as a commissioner protecting the county dollar, when I hear Paul Ga Cavan, Architect LLC, has helped us out, we've changed our mind a little bit, and they've actually gone in and made some of these changes without. Let's put those on the priority list for using, <laughs> and some of these outfits that we get burned by. Is there a way to exclude them from the bidding process totally? Uh, if we come across that situation, I think we would work with our legal department to to disqualify bidders based on that or professional architects. With professional services, the good thing is if it's not federal money, we can just exclude them entirely and just say we want to go with X, Y, and Z. If it's federal money, we get their qualifications from them. We can disqualify them based on past, past experiences. Music to my ears. So everything you said really helped clear up any questions I had. Thank you so much, Mr. Foley. And just so the board is aware, this is the same architectural firm that um, did the architecture the upstairs, the district court that's just finishing up, and the same firm that the board approved for from the justice court that is a building firm that's stage current. So we have some experience within the buildings. Okay. Anything further? Hey, commissioner's public input. No. With that, I'll make a motion uh, that we approve a contract with Paul Cavan Architect LLC for pro professional design services for the Dayton Government Center for a total fee of two million one hundred twenty-three thousand eight hundred dollars. Okay. Have I'll a second. second. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Jacobson and a second by Commissioner Henderson. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes five zero. Human Services 16A for possible action to prove the services of independent contractor Roman Polak in an amount not to exceed $14,080 to provide behavioral health clinician services with the mobile outreach safety team. Most. Yes. Good morning, Shayla Holmes, Director of Human Services for the record. We um, are bringing forth another contract for to add another contracted uh, licensed social worker to the pool to be able to respond for most team as needed. Okay. Any questions? Commissioner Jacobson. Um, with that, Chairman Hockaday, I would appreciate it if you would address us as Dr. Shayla Holmes from now on, please. It's going to take a little getting used to, but I'll work on that. Okay. <laughs> Anything further? Any public input? Seeing none, I'll look for a, a motion for Dr. Holmes. I move to. I move to. Uh, I'm hearing an echo. I'm sorry. Move to approve the services of an independent contract. No, wrong one. Yeah. You're there. Approve the services of independent contractor Isabella. No. That's the no, wrong one. We're on Roman Black. I'm okay. 16A. That's one I was on. Uh, you're on B. You second guessed yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Approve the services of independent contractor Roman Pollock in the amount not to exceed $14,080 to provide behavioral health clinical services with the mobile outreach safety team. Got a second. Second. Commissioner Hendricks. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Keller and a second by Commissioner Hendricks. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0.
So we'll go to 16B for possible action. Approve the services of independent contractor Isabella McAbelt in an amount not to exceed $11,440 to provide behavioral health clinician services with the Lyon County Resilient Families Program. Sheila Holmes, or Dr. Sheila Holmes, for the record. <laughs> this is an existing contractor with our most team. We are looking to add an additional contract for her to be able to provide the assessments with the new grant, the Lyon County Resilient Families, which is funded by state opioid dollars for us to provide assessment and connection to resources and identify appropriate level of care. And Isabella is very excited to be working with youth. And so we jumped at the opportunity to add additional hours to her contract with us through a different funding stream. So we did a different contract for her specifically for this funding stream. Okay. Any commissioner comments? Public input. Seeing none, I'll look for a motion on 16B. I'm up to approve the services of the independent contractor, Isabella. What's your last name? Macabellas. 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 And in the amount not to exceed $11,440 to provide behavioral health clinical clinician services with the Lyon County Resilient, Resilient Families Program. Second. Motion by Commissioner Keller and a second by Commissioner Jacobson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Thank you, Dr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have a few left. Let's go ahead and take uh, five minutes. Uh, let's come back at 10.07. This is my call. I got ten oh six. Yeah. In oh seven, we are going to reconvene with item 17A for presentation only, Lyon County Emergency Manager Taylor Allison to provide a report on current conditions of the city of Urington's water supply system. Go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, Taylor Allison, Lyon County Emergency Manager for the record. Um, thank you for the opportunity this morning to provide a brief overview of how we've been leaning forward to support the city of Urington. Address the municipal well. Um, concerns. So a little overview of the situation. Back in April, just a few short weeks ago, one of the city's primary water production wells suffered uh, catastrophic damages, leaving it offline indefinitely. This well accounts for approximately 18% of the city's design production capacity. I wanted to clarify that there because um, while it's 18% of the production capacity, it was utilized um, much more than 18% to provide water to the city throughout the peak months. Uh, so Lyon County Emergency Management, as well as our utilities director and staff have been supporting the city and leaning forward to address increased demands on the remaining wells and, con and concerns as we prepare for the summer, summer months. Wells and other water production infrastructure. While there's not an immediate need for concern for water supply and production issues, we're planning for all possible scenarios. So being, you know, being down a well indicates public works will operate a tighter operation. You lose that buffer protection, that increased uh, production capacity compared to past years where that additional well, you know, supports your, your demand. You have that room in the summer months. 
So the city of Urington approved a 2022 water conservation plan pictured there on the left is their peak production months, which usually fall between the months of July and late August, September. There was a peak in May you see there in 2020, but uh, folks happen to be home in 2020. So that may be an anomaly year and right. we're hoping that we get more time and we won't see a peak in this month. So peak demand usually correlates closely with high heat. We're working with our National Weather Service partners to monitor the heat and what that will look like this summer. You're seeing in the forecast this week, it's warming up. So um, how will that impact their water demands? Eight to 14 day outlook. So that's the week of May 14th through the 20th. The forecast is looking above average temperatures and um, above average or, or near above average precipitation. We saw that with the storms early this week. So we're kind of looking at that, the, the close forecast as well as the long-term uh, trends, trending above average temperatures and equal chances of precipitation. Uh, it's difficult and unclear to say at this time, but we're gonna keep getting those weather reports from our partners at the Weather Service and see how that will impact water demands. Just to give you an idea of what normal looks like for the city, there is a temperature gauge here in the city of Burlington, and the peak heat tends to fall in that last week of July. Uh, there's also a pretty large event that happens down here around that week, so we're, we're working with the, the event organizers of Night in the Country, too, to watch the weather and water demands, but Late July into August is where we'll see the peak heat. And then lastly, as far as weather and temperature are concerned, um, 100 plus degree days highly impact water demand. So here in Urington, um, ever since the year 2000, there have been significant increases in 100 plus degree temperature days. Last year, 2023, there were only about five days. That seems to be a lower year compared to others. Um, and it fell right there at the end of July, that one week. But with the amount of precipitation moisture we had and of course flooding, you know, kept te temperatures down low like that. Um, but we've seen up to 20, 100 plus degree days. So if we have that this year, would significantly impact water demands for the city. So what are we doing planning forward? Um, my office is working with the city to schedule local, state, federal partner coordination calls. We've had a couple of those already and identify short-term solutions to get us through this summer, including developing a water monitoring system and thresholds for action, such as a loss of pressure in the system, a mechanical failure on another well, tank levels, um, et cetera. Fortifying the system against vulnerabilities and taking additional security measures to make sure there isn't uh, any other um, impact to the system. And then identifying long-term solutions. Uh, we're looking at options for the city to move forward with another well or water production source um, to get through future summers. Likely that won't be in place by the peak this year, but what can we do so that we aren't running into this issue year after year. Um, we're working to identify potential funding sources with uh, agencies such as the Bureau of Safe Drinking Water, USDA, Governor's Office of Energy, and others that have come to the table, Division of Emergency Management, what funding might be available on an emergency basis um, to get that back online. And then what uh, regulatory bodies can expedite permitting processes and, and get us back online sooner. So the goal, again, is to have another in place by summer, at the latest, hopefully sooner than that. So the city has explored uh, water conservation strategies. You know, even since I put this slide together, um, re reducing the watering schedule in the public parks and fields has been a discussion. Um, we were looking at 20%. I know the city manager has explored 20, a quarter, so 25% to 50% if needed um, to kind of curb that peak public education on water conservation strategies help us reduce waste where possible so that we don't uh, stress the, the existing and remaining infrastructure. And then reducing bulk water, commercial water supply during those peak months as needed. In emergency situation, the city 
we recommend it should consider limiting limited watering schedules as outlined in their uh, city municipal code. And they did approve in the city council meeting on Monday uh, to provide that authority to the city manager to enact uh, watering restrictions limitations on an emergent basis if we get to that point. Um, that's it. As far as a brief overview, the one other update I had since preparing these slides, the city has scheduled an emergency meeting for today at 2 p.m. Um, to do an initial declaration, which will allow you know, timely access to resources if we have to, um, to acquire engineering and well drillers and get it back online as quickly as possible. So, any questions? Questions? Commissioner Keller? I just, uh, did you say there were three wells that they had total? How many wells did they have? They have four, but one operates kind of on an isolated system. So, um, different based pressure on or several something. factors, it doesn't contribute to um, this pressure zone, which is right here in the city of Arrington. And what are the ages of the wells? Do you know, or is this the oldest well or? We're still analyzing all the data. <laughs> you know, some of that's been lost with historical. Um, turnover and things. So we're pulling all that information together, analyzing, you know, the design, the construction of each of the wells, what are their capacities, the, the data from the flow meters, and hopefully you pulling that all together into a plan. But that's still in progress. That's all I had. Okay. Sure, Jacobson. Thank you, Chairman Ockney. Um, so did this well collapse? Is that? It did. It had, um, Luckily, it's the same well that's been offline uh, due to the uranium toxicity. So it's not another in addition to, but they did have uh, yeah, a total loss of that one. So this this may be a far reach and uh, something, but can they can attribute this to the flood at all? Wa uh, raising the water table and bringing in, uh, is there FEMA funds out there? I don't. I don't. I can't speak to that. You know, that would be a question for the engineers and what may have caused it. Uh, if, but as far as tying into the flooding, you know, it's, I can't see there would be a way. Well, we could claim it, right? Yeah. It's its own incident, and we are, are going to run it and manage it as its own. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, and and then my final uh, question is for, I do appreciate the presentation, so I don't forget to say that, but um, um, are they... Did did I hear you? They're looking at doing a watering schedule down here, even addresses, odd addresses, or is that part of their emergency meeting today? That was already addressed on um, during the city council meeting, so it's already built out in their code. The first tier is uh, every other day, odd even watering schedules. So your address, odd or even, water on the first day of the month. So how the long, some of the long-term residents like that, that have watered every day and. So not, not currently in place, but that would be on an emergent basis. The city okay. manager could say, move forward. We need to uh, cut that. Gotcha. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. I just wanted to thank you for all the work you're doing on this. I know the, the last meeting that, that I attended, you certainly had done your homework and uh, you've been doing a lot of work ever since like every day. Uh, the county is jumping in, uh, Mr. Bruchetta and uh, and Mr. Haskin and yourself really putting in the effort to make sure that we can keep our city here with some water flowing. And as I stated at the last meeting, you know, we, we can depend on the communities. Every community I've been in when they've asked to step up and conserve, it's worked. So I'm sure that the city council is going to be considering that they've already thought about the odd and even and just asking certainly will help. And I believe that the people will step up and do their job. So thank you for all Mr. the work. Yes. Uh, Chairman Hockaday, sorry. Uh, you, you, you made me think of something. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, it is nice when we have employees like Mr. Burketta and, and uh, Miss Allison here recognized uh, speaks to the quality of our employees in Lyon County that we have experts and, and uh, they're willing to jump in and, and share some of their expertise. So good job to our team as well. Thank you. All right. We're going to go on to the County manager here for 18 A, B and C. 
18A for possible action approved task order D between Lyon County, Nevada and Armstrong Consultants Incorporated providing professional engineering services for the Silver Springs Airport for partial parallel taxi way design in the amount of $99,895 and to authorize the county manager to sign. Andrew Haskin, Lyon County Manager. So um, as a part of our airport improvement um, plan every year, we uh, put forth a list of projects that uh, we're gonna be applying for grant funds that the FAA has for imp airport improvements. So this is for um, the, this contract is for Arm Armstrong Consultants to um, prepare the engineering services for the parallel partial parallel taxiway at the Silver Springs Airport. Um, so this gets paid for mostly out of uh, grant funds. County does have some match. We do. Yes, Commissioner Harrison. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was going to ask what the match was. Is it five percent or? I think on okay. these ones it's five percent. Yeah, because airports are usually ninety-five-five, but six point two five. Six point two five. Okay. Those those <laughs> those are a lot more tolerable than twenty-five yeah. percent matches. Yeah. Okay. Anything further? Any public input for the airport improvement? Then I will look for a motion on 18A. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve task order D between Lyon County, Nevada and Armstrong Consultants Incorporated, providing for professional engineering services for the Silver Springs Airport for partial parallel, parallel taxiway design. Say that fast three times. In the amount of $99,895 and authorize the county manager to sign. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Hendricks. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 0. 18B for possible action approved task order F between Lyon County, Nevada and Armstrong Consultants Incorporated, providing for professional engineering services for the Silver Springs Airport for lighting system upgrade design in the amount of $52,430 and to authorize the county manager to sign. Right. Andrew Haskin, Lyon County Manager. So um, the same deal, um, just, just different projects. So this is for the lighting upgrade, lighting system upgrade at the Silver Springs Airport. Commissioners, any comments, public input? Seeing none, I'll look for a motion on 18B. I move that we approve task order F between Lyon County, Nevada and Armstrong Consultants Incorporated providing for professional engineering services for the Silver Springs Airport for lighting system upgrade design in the amount of $52,430 and to authorize the county manager to sign. Second. All right. Motion by Commissioner Hendricks and second by Commissioner Henderson. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. 18C for possible action to discuss and provide direction to the county manager in regards to developing a bill draft resolution and BDR for the 2025 legislature, which may include discussion on possible topics for a BDR, direction to the staff to research and come back with information related to a possible BDR and input from the public on possible topics for a BDR. The board may direct staff to prepare a resolution and bring back to the board for further consideration. It's an ongoing item. Commissioners and county manager. No? I, I, I yeah, sorry, Andrew Haskin, Lyon County yeah. Manager. I don't have anything that, uh, this is just our standing item for, for us to discuss ideas. Okay, Commissioner. Uh, yes, uh, th thank you, Mr. Chair. So I, I'm just curious if your management team has brought to you a particular statute they're having problems with that we need to address. Mm -hmm. Because I would like the, the input coming from that way. If there's something out there, you know, that is causing them to work harder, not smarter. We have had um, an initial discussion on that, and I've asked for ideas. Um, so I know that um, the department heads are still working on that. Um, and so we will be bringing that forward shortly. Since we're always in peril during a legislative session, maybe we should have a BDR that says we restrict the number of BDRs that the legislatures have. <laughs> so, yeah. um, actually, they did that a session ago, or two sessions ago, they reduced the numbers. I missed that. Yes, Commissioner Keller. I just wanted to bring it to everybody's attention that if we 
do anything for uh, NACO to consider. They're running up against a date, a hard date. And so it's going to be, we have to prove to recommend that. And then their, their board has to approve it. So by the time, so it takes a lot of time by the time you do the agenda stuff. Sure, absolutely. What is the date on for you? What is their deadline? I don't have it in front of me, but I maybe Commissioner Henderson. Um, the the BDRs have to be submitted by I believe September first or September fifteenth. Mm -hmm. So they so the NACO BDRs have to be approved by the NACO board at their August meeting, which means it has to be approved by the legislative committee at their earlier August meeting. So. So, so we've got to get stuff to NACO probably by, I'd say, June or July at the latest. And to, ideas. And to go on that, uh, a lot of times, by the time you get it to any committee, they might not get it done in one committee meeting. And they might review it and have more questions and whether they're going to support it or not. And that's what we're asking them to do if we do bring something forward. We'll take a look at the, the list of items and uh, bring another item back. Anything further? Public input on that. Seeing none. Um, guess we're you have your guidance. Thank you. I don't think we need anything further Thank on you. that one. Ongoing item. Uh, item nineteen, agenda requests. I'll start with Commissioner Jacobson. Um, I would just, if the city of Urington would like to. Uh, send a representative to give us updates on, on their well. Um, I'm not saying that Miss Allison doesn't do a great job, but if the city would like to show up and, and uh, represent um, and speak to the matter as well, I'd like to extend the invitation to them. Commissioner Keller. Yeah, I want to get something going uh, about the subjects that I was talking about earlier. Uh, the imbalance of... Uh, revenue between commercial industrial and uh residential that we're seeing in this county and why we're not getting some of that electrical and some of the things that we need to to put us on the map so i want to have a discussion on that to cover uh what our taxes are so it's going to be pretty broad i guess because i want to know who we're putting pressure on or put calling the governor doing resolutions talking to go ahead i've always i've talked to go ahead recently myself but that doesn't carry the weight of the board uh also the puc what are they doing and so i think we have to start the discussion now as quick as possible before we end up more of a problem commissioner henderson none at this time thank you commissioner Hendricks. none at this time and i don't have any at this time uh final commissioner comments we'll start with commissioner Hendricks. nothing Commissioner Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I have one thing that I've actually been meaning to say and keep forgetting to, so I wrote it down this time so I won't forget. I just want to thank you for the way you run meetings, the way you start them on time. Nothing bothers me more than going to a meeting, be there, it's supposed to start at nine o'clock, and the people running the meeting go, oh, we're going to wait a few more minutes for other people to join us. Why are you inconveniencing the people that are there on time for the convenience of those that aren't? So I really appreciate the way you run your meetings. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Henderson or Keller. Uh, something else I forgot to mention earlier. We did get uh, some comment from our congressman about I-11 is probably going to go on the far side of Walker Lake and bypass Hawthorne in the in the extreme future. Uh, but that's going to leave a further impoverished community to our east. And what's the impact is that going to be on our county too? So I want that you know to be aware of it and follow that too. Thank you for that input. Uh, Commissioner Jacobson. Not at this time. Thank you. I don't have any further comments. Um, final public participation. It's anticipated that public participation will be held at this time, though it may be returned to at any time in the agenda. Citizens wishing to speak, please state your name for the record, and you'll be limited to three minutes. Do we have any further public participation? Seeing none, then uh, we do have a closed session today. So I'm going to adjourn the regular meeting and we will reconvene for closed session afterwards at 
1028.